Good morning everyone, today we're going to be talking about everything we know about the Augment Transfer System because they have given us a little bit more detail on the website. But before we jump into all of that, if you're new to the channel, I upload NGS content daily, so if you do play this game, I would really appreciate a subscribe as it really helps out the channel. Anyway, without further ado, let's begin the video. So the very first thing I want to go over is going to be the operation report as I skipped this in yesterday's video, but they did answer several questions. We're going to be skipping a couple of them and we're mainly just going to be focusing on this one right here. The all ship matchmaking implementation for Lasile exploration was a great feature, even if it seemed to have some bugs at the beginning. Do you have plans to use it for the other quests? And they say right here, as we have received a lot of positive comments on this feature and request, we will make it available in other quests. We are looking for the best way to proceed. So at the moment, they're still in the planning phases of how they could implement this, for example, to Dark Falls Dalian or, you know, the big boss fights. Nothing is set in stone at the moment because everything is still in the planning phase and they haven't decided what game modes will they be working on all ship matchmaking. However, I'm fairly confident that any of the game modes that you have to go to the quest counter to queue up for, those are the number one candidate of getting all ship matchmaking because you already have to go to a queue and so it's going to be a lot easier for them to implement this. However, game modes such as combat zones as well as exploration zones where you know you just kind of teleport there and there's no queue times, those are probably going to be put on the back burner. I do not think those will get all ship matchmaking anytime soon. Now with that out of the way, the next thing I want to go over is more information regarding the nameless city exploration. So this is the news zone that we're getting next week. So something that I didn't mention in yesterday's video is when you kill enemies over here and when you collect all of those coins in order to get exploration points, you actually get a reduction to your defense the more exploration points you have. And when you die, you do lose half of them. So as we can see in this image over here, this player has 12,700 points and thus they have a level 5 debuff to their defenses. Now as they spend the points, this debuff will go away. So as we can see this treasure chest over here has a 3,000 point cost. So in order to open this, you need at least 3,000 points points. So once the player spends 3000 points, obviously this will go down and so the debuff will also lessen. So the more points you have, the more squishier you're going to be and the more risk there is because you might get one shot or you might get killed by random mobs. However, you'll be able to open up all of these chests. Now once you spend all of those points, these debuffs will go away because then you'll have less points. So as we can see in this image, this player only has 2400 points and the debuff is only level 1. Meanwhile, this player has 5200 points and has the the debuff level 3. So basically it's whenever you get more points the more debuffs you get the less points you have the less debuffs you get. So the gameplay loop for this game mode is simply we run around we kill enemies we get points we open up boxes we get loot rinse and repeat over and over and over. Now as I said in yesterday's video there is another way to play this game mode and that is just to avoid enemies altogether and just parkour and pick up the exploration points instead and that is also another way to earn a ton of points and uh, you just avoid combat altogether. Now another thing that I didn't mention in yesterday's video is actually the weapon potential for the new 11 star rarity weapons. So the first thing I want to get out of the way is these weapons are going to be weaker than the wing guard. Uh, Uber actually went through the entire NGS headline and we found out that it's actually negative 23 damage. So, you know, it's slightly weaker than the wing guard weapons. Not by much, you know, you'll still be fine if you just want to rock this new weapon instead. However, the wing guard weapons are still going to be the best in slot. Obviously, we're going to need to test it once the weapons actually come out. You know, we'll do the math with high fixes and all of that stuff. But nevertheless, Sega's intention was to make this weapon super accessible easy to get for the average player but wing guards are still going to be your best in slot so if you have a wing guard you can just stick with it if you want a wing guard you can still farm for it so you know i know there's still crimson realm going on with the 250 percent rare drop rate as well as the urgent quest rare drop rate so if you still want to farm for a wing guard you are not wasting your time the wing guard is still going to be better than this new weapon However, the weapon potential for this new weapon is actually pretty cool because it increases PP recovery and PB gauge when attacking and on top of that, it also increases the likelihood of critical hits. So it increases your critical chance, which is really awesome. Now, how much does it increase? That is something that we need to look at. If it's the same as Vershmel's, where it's 100% crit chance, then this weapon is going to be absolutely busted. But I personally do not think it's going to be 100%. I think it's just going to be something mediocre, like 10 to 20%, somewhere in that range. It's still going to be good, 
but it's not going to be like earth shattering OP. Now with all of that out of the way, it's finally time to talk about the augment transfer system. So I did mention this in yesterday's video where you only need one end augment transfer pass. As you can see in this image right here, they only needed one end augment transfer pass in order to transfer all six of their augments. Now what I didn't mention in yesterday's video is when you transfer EX augments between the new 11 star rarity weapons, it does not consume the dedicated item or does not consume an end augment transfer pass in order to transfer these EX augments. So this little piece of information is incredibly important because as you can see here, there is no item cost. You don't actually need an end augment transfer pass in order to transfer the EX augments between the new 11 star rarity weapons. But keep in mind, it has to be between the Iridium weapons and another Iridium weapon, all right? They both have to be from the same 11 star rarity series. So this is super important to keep in mind. However, it's very, very nice that you can just transfer your EX augments right off the bat like this. And this is what might make the new 11 star rarity weapons slightly stronger than your wing guard weapon. Because with our wing guard weapon, we currently have our traditional augments. But some of these EX augments look incredibly promising, as I showed in yesterday's video. So depending on how powerful these EX augments are, it could save you a lot of money because you can just transfer them between the weapons. Let's say that you get a katana and you're like, wow, I finally got the weapon that I want, but it doesn't have any of the right EX augments. You know, maybe it has the EX augments that uh, buff Hunter, for example. Then you get like a sword drop that has the katana one, that has everything that buffs your braver class. You can just transfer those EX augments right over to your current katana at no cost. Well, almost no cost, but it does cost 10,000 Masetta. But at least you don't need an, an augment transfer pass. So that will actually make this weapon series very, very accessible and very new player friendly because you don't need to spend a lot of resources farming for these rare materials and stuff like that. You can simply just transfer these EX augments whenever you want, super easy peasy. And it also seems like we can have three different EX augments at any given time. So let's say you have your new weapon, you know, you upgrade it all the way to plus 90 so that you have seven augment slots. Three of those augment slots should be taken up by these EX augments already. So you only need to throw in another four augments. That is my understanding. We don't have confirmation if that is how the EX augments are actually going to work. But, uh, you know, we're going to have to wait and see. But nevertheless, this is really nice news to know that, hey, if you are going to be investing in the new 11 star rarity weapons, these new EX augments are going to be very, very beneficial to your class because they give 4.5% all potency. Now, there are a couple that only give you 4% all potency. So just keep that in mind. But nevertheless, that is still incredibly, incredibly powerful and better than like the majority of all of the current augments that we have. From my understanding, I think we only have three augments that actually give more than 4.5% potency. The first one is, of course, the Anadi capsule over here, which gives you 5% potency. I mean, I guess if you use the XD capsule, that also gives you more than 4.5%. But then we also have the Gland Gigas Maste at 4.75, and we have the Lux Howl Finale at 5% everything else is actually lower than 4.5%. So Gladius Soul is 3.75%. High Kavar's Domna is only 3%. And Grand Red Keeper, well, Grand Red Keeper doesn't count. But basically, there are a bunch of different augments that are lower than 4.5%. So if you do decide to go with the XD capsules, if I understand this correctly, it's going to take up three of the slots and it's all going to be four to 4.5% potency, which is incredibly powerful because then you stack your Anadi Castle, your Glan Gigas Massa, your Hal Finale, and then for the last slot, you throw in a Mega Trial or something, and boom, you are basically best in slot. You have so much potency from just those augments themselves. So that is definitely something you can keep in mind that, hey, maybe wing guards aren't the way to go, especially if you're really hurting on money because uh, you can save yourself a lot of Masetta. You know, you don't need to make your Gladius Soul. You don't need a high Kavaris Domina. You don't need your Grand Dread Keeper or your Mega Triel Capsule. Well, I guess you still need the Mega Triel. But it's going to save you a little bit on the augments because you can just slap in those EX augments instead. Special thanks to all the members for supporting the channel. It really means a lot to me. Thank you again. But yeah, that's all I wanted to cover in today's video. Hopefully you guys found it helpful. If you did, I would appreciate a like and a subscribe. And I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video. Bye.